Half a year ago, I leaked details of Intel's Fishhawk Falls platform. This was a platform meant to launch by quarter four 2022 and bring above four gigahertz clock speeds to dozens of only big golden cove cores and a mountain of IO as well for both of the variants of this workstation platform. Now, that last thing I said is important. It was a major focus of that video, workstation platform. You see, everyone I talked to back then and still today says that Intel isn't calling this HEDT anymore, that HEDT is basically dead. And it actually mirrors some things I hear out of AMD where AMD is considering making Threadripper Pro the only Threadripper moving forward. Now, back then, last year, I detailed that there would be two segmentations of Fishhawk Falls. Expert Workstation, which would come with 56 Golden Cove cores, 112 PCIe Gen 5 lanes, and 8-channel memory. You know, this is your, you know, crazy expensive, truly professional workstation. But then also a mainstream workstation that would probably be 28 to 36 cores, 64 PCIe Gen 5 lanes, still more than enough for most people. And likely, although not 100% confirmed yet, quad channel memory support. Now, that last bit is actually what mostly needs the updating in today's video. You see, when I look back through my documentation, all of the specific engineering samples I had access to with their spec sheets, they were all XCC dies, extreme core count dies. And although I had proof of an MCC die, medium core count die, I didn't technically have specifics on any examples of engineering samples for that medium core count configuration. So me and actually my sources just assumed, you know, whatever it is, it's probably 28 to 36 cores if we were to guess based on what they used to do with the top end to mid range workstation um, segmentation. And in fact, back then I was kind of just assuming Intel was gonna do something like AMD did with Zen 1 Threadripper. Instead of four tiles, like what's in the top Sapphire Rapids, they just give you two tiles. That's how they get quad channel memory. And so, yeah, there would be no way. It would probably be limited to 30 cores unless they used four tiles and disabled them, which they could do. But that'd be only if they went with that weird eight channel thing I heard could happen. Now, that speculation that I left in white in that video seems like it's been wrong. And I'm excited it's wrong because, well, mainstream workstation... Sapphire Rapids, Fishhawk Falls is sounding a lot more interested for people who don't have 10 grand to drop on a workstation. You see, what I am told now is that the MCC die is actually monolithic, topping out at 24 cores. Now, some people might say 24 cores, ah, I wish it was more. Yes, but consider how much more IPC this has than AMD's existing non-pro threadripper, which is still Zen 2. And I've actually received information that the clock speeds are going to be much higher faster. And this is important. Look at Sapphire Rapids here, the standard server variant the, with the extreme core count configuration. Does that thing look cheap to make to you? Look, this is going to be a lot more expensive than mainstream workstation chips than desktop Alder Lake, but a monolithic die, it's going to make it a lot cheaper. It's a lot less extravagant. And I think it's going to bring much needed competition to the lower well, to what used to be called HEDT that neither of these companies, AMD or Intel, want to call HEDT anymore. And so, yeah, I've got a lot more details that are much more confirmed now about mainstream workstation and even a few surprises for Intel's expert workstation platforms. I think this is something that a lot of the professional workers slash gamers who have been waiting for something new are going to be very excited to hear about. But first, an ad from a sponsor. All right. Let's see what you did. Or you see, th that's not how addition works. Today's video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform built to make you see math and science in a new way that's fun. Brilliant doesn't beam boring lecture videos into your head. They have fun, hands-on courses that have been tailored to keep you engaged so you can see subjects like mechanical engineering, that's what I majored in, by the way, and other STEM courses in a new way that is fun and makes you learn. These courses have availability for all ability and knowledge levels, so you'll find something that interests you for sure, whether it's brushing up on everyday mathematics you're getting rusty in since you've been to college almost a decade ago, like me, or learning the fundamentals of computer science. Whether you're trying to keep sharp or learning new skills for your career brilliant is free to start and waiting for you join the over 11 million people already learning on brilliant with a special offer just for moore's laws dead listeners head to brilliant.org 
at the link in the description below and get started for free with Brilliance Interactive Lessons. The first 200 listeners will get 20% off an annual premium membership and clicking on this link really does help the Moore's Laws Dead channel. It costs you nothing. Get started for free at Brilliant today. All right, Sapphire Rapids Mainstream Workstation Leak, May 2022. Let's not waste any more time. Although, at the beginning, I do have to be clear, because I know people will just share this PowerPoint slide without listening to what I'm saying. These are going to be branded as Extreme Xeons. HEDT is dead in name. Even if internally at Intel they call it HEDT, because this is seen as a spiritual successor, at least the Mainstream Workstation variant is... This is now not an HEDT platform. The reason I put HEDT in the title of this video is because, let's be honest, most people who have HEDT systems still call them HEDT systems, even if Intel won't. And I want them to be able to find what I'm talking about. But a few years from now, I think it's quite possible this may be a term that Intel and maybe even AMD don't even use anymore. All right, let's move on, though. SPR Xeon W mainstream workstation platform. This is the spiritual successor to Cascade Lake X. 24 cores, 48 threads of Golden Cove on a monolithic die. Now, this uses the same pin count LGA as server Sapphire Rapids. Uh, Intel isn't making separate sockets anymore, according to what I am told. And the boost clocks of this should be above 5 gigahertz, likely above 5.2 gigahertz for single core boost. And currently, the target for all core boost is 4.4 to 4.6 gigahertz, depending on the SKU. Of course, they could overclock this more, but actually, some people may see that and not be that impressed. Uh, that's a lot for dozens of cores, you guys. <laughs> Go look at what the base clocks are for Threadripper right now they're not even close to this and when you combine the ipc of what golden cove has the enhancements of sapphire rapids and these clock speeds i actually think this thing's gonna be an incredibly good hybrid professional gaming platform and pl1 tdp is between 200 to 300 watts pl2 300 to 400 basically expect this to use maybe a little more than thread wrapper power consumption depending on how hard they push it but i'm not hearing anything crazy like 600 watts tdps here you know at least not right now now four channel gddr5 with ecc support which is Thank you, Intel. It took them forever to ever bring that to an HDDT like platform. And I am told that theoretically this platform should be able to support up to two terabytes of RAM. But one source tells me that Intel's briefing people on it being limited to 512 gigabytes for segmentation purposes. So I wouldn't expect more than 512 gigabytes, but know that they could have given you more if that's where they stop. Although that's certainly more than enough for most people. And 64 PCIe Gen 5 lanes. Again, I think that's probably the perfect amount for like an HDT successor. It's way more than most people need. You don't even do Crossfire anymore. And I am also, though, told that it could have reduced AVX units from the extreme core count configuration. Now, some of you may say, duh, it has less cores, but no, I mean, this thing might have worse AVX 512 performance per core than what you will get out of the expert workstation and server platforms. Some pretty classic Intel segmentation here. Now, I haven't had this verified by all sources, but one of my most reliable sources says this, and this is something Intel's done before for segmentation, so it's not crazy to me at all. Uh, and currently, this is exciting, Emerald Rapids is planned to be a drop-in upgrade in 2023. Now, for those who don't remember, at least last time I checked, Emerald Rapids goes up to 64 cores instead of, well, 56 cores for Sapphire Rapids initially, but now I'm told that there could be a Halo 60-core uh, CPU that is the fully enabled die. So, it's not much of an increase in core counts, but they might bump it up a little bit on the mid-range one. And they might, you know, so let's say they go up to like 26 or 28 cores instead of 24. And, you know, Raptor Cove brings higher IPC and clock speeds. So I think it might be interesting to see what a Fishhawk Falls platform with a 24 to 28 core Raptor Cove HDT-like processor might compete with Zen 4 on AM5 if AMD really does neglect the between consumer and between workstation platform because it might be pretty close to Zen 4 and single core performance while bringing way more cores. But we'll just have to see on that. At the very least, Intel's bringing competition. And Intel is trying to launch Fishhawk Falls by quarter three, 2022. That was always the plan, by the way. But, of course, you can never be sure with Intel. At the very least, OEMs are guaranteed supply in quarter four, so it'll be out this year. And Sapphire Rapids Xeon W, the expert workstation platform, succeeding the Ice Lake X workstation series. There are some surprises in this one. The first one isn't. 56 cores, 112 threads of Golden Cove cores per 
socket. I'm told by multiple sources that Intel is planning to launch dual socket SBR workstations to compete with Zen 4 Threadripper Pro, which, again, that's going to use way more energy than a single 96 core Threadripper Pro, which I'll talk about that platform in a second later in the video. But, uh, you know, 112 Golden Cove cores versus 96 Zen 4 cores. And presumably they'll be able to bring even more than that. You know, maybe they'll bring you dual 64 core. So 128 core Raptor Cove, Emerald Rapids based uh, products next year. This might actually get interesting. Again, AMD's definitely got a massive advantage here, but Intel might actually force AMD to stop being greedy in these segments. And again, same pin count, LGA4677, uh, 8-channel DDR5 with ECC support. Theoretically, again, up to 4 terabytes of RAM as possible, but I'm told by one source it could be 2 terabytes for this model or something, but we're just going to have to see where they segment it. But it could be up to 4 terabytes. 112 PCIe Gen 5 lanes is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, expect it to be shown off possibly May 27th at Computex, if it's launching quarter three, that's when I would expect Intel to show this off, probably next to finally confirming the top specs of their Alchemist products. And 24-core MCC is also expected to easily beat the 3970X and Multi-30. Now, remember, that's the 32-core Zen 2 Threadripper. Now, you might go, really? 24 cores beating AMD's 32? I mean, guys, it's going to be clocked like 30% faster with 30% more IPC. Yeah. In fact, when I crunch the numbers... I could see why my contact was being told by Intel, we're not quite going to match the 3990X in multi-threading almost ever. But it's interesting they think it gets somewhat close. But again, if you think about it, 30% higher IPC probably than Zen 2 overall. And then you're also bringing like, what I mean, at least 30% higher clock speeds. You can see how... If AMD doesn't update Threadripper for reasonable pricing, they can walk away with basically the entire market below 64 cores if AMD gets cocky. Um, yeah, so when it comes to pricing, though, I want to be clear. I don't have exact pricing. Intel hasn't even made the decision on pricing yet, of course. But this, the mainstream workstation platform you're seeing there, this is the spiritual successor to Cascade Lake X. So I don't think it's going to be cheap. I mean, you're getting triple the big cores that the i9-12900KS gives you, but there aren't any little cores. And if they really wanted to, they could price this at $1,500 and make okay profits. And I think the pricing should definitely be below $2,500, which again, this is going to blow away 32 core uh, thre Zen 2 Threadripper, just blow it away. So cheaper than what AMD is charging for their outdated Threadripper right now. Guys, competition is coming back to this segment. Thank God. So there you go. Excited? Well, I don't know about you, but I am. You know, I wasn't that excited when I started putting the notes together. It's not like this was some big RDNA 4 leak or something. But as I started finishing up that PowerPoint slide, I thought to myself, yeah, I don't know. I was getting worried competition in this type of segment was just gone forever. And 24 big Golden Cove cores clocked above 5 gigahertz if you have the right cooling. God, that's going to just be a gaming creator monster and on an mcc die yes a die that's bigger than consumer alder lake on desktop right now but eh, presumably is still within a reasonable monolithic die size that isn't crazy expensive to make maybe cheaper to make than the latest thread rippers are because it's just one monolithic die i think this could really be a creator gamer hybrid platform that the community has been dying for since I don't know, Zen Plus, because after Zen Plus, AMD massively hiked up prices. And look, I don't think for that top 24 core, they're going to charge $1,000, but I wouldn't be surprised they charge 2000 or less to make a big splash. And I mean, after that, the repercussions of this leak are even more exciting to me. I mean, this tells me Intel isn't just doing those crazy Ice Lake X workstations that no one can afford, kind of like no one can afford AMD Threadripper anymore, that they're going to keep making an in-between. And that means presumably there's going to be some Raptor Cove follow-up and then presumably a Redwood Cove follow-up. I mean, imagine, you know, Raptor Cove should have bring 10% better single threading performance than Alder Lake. And then Redwood Cove should be maybe up to 20% better than that. I mean, you're, that's about close to Zen 4 IPC. What if they give you 32 Redwood Cove cores with insane IPC and insane clocks, you know, early 2024 or something? Well, the fact is, now we know Intel is doing stuff like this again. They are not neglecting this market. And so we can hope 
that cool things are coming from them that aren't just $5,000 Ice Lake X products that will bring competition to the part of the Threadripper market that actually matters, the one most people buy, the ones that aren't the crazy 64 cores. And that's got me very excited. Indeed, I think this may push AMD to stop neglecting this space because, well, the reason I'm worried, let me show you some quotes here. One of my best sources said that Zen 4 Threadripper Pro was coming, and yes, it will have up to 96 cores, but that right now he only had confirmation of the Pro variant. And another source saying on their roadmap, Zen 4 Threadripper is still coming, but technically he wasn't sure if AMD was going to have it be Pro only. So... At this point, I'm guessing AMD actually does a full normal Threadripper lineup with Zen 4 that's really impressive, but they didn't have to. And it's very clear to me that they are considering making Threadripper Pro only until Intel responded. And now Intel is responding. And I don't think X690, although, like, you know, like I've talked about this before, this idea of like not like X670, the successor to X570, but like a an above average AM5 uh, socket chipset that isn't quite workstation or HEDT, but is better than the standard X70 uh, line. I thought that might be good enough for me, but I'd like to have the option of something above that, something truly HEDT. And I know a lot of other people would as well, and now I think it's going to happen. I guess the final thing to say in this video then is, let's, let's remember what AMD can do though. Based on what I'm hearing Sapphire Rapids should beat Zen 3 Epic overall, but Milan X beats Sapphire Rapids and it's already out. And even if AMD hasn't launched <clears throat> Milan X to Threadripper, they had a roadmap where it was all planned out. So if AMD really wants to, all they need to do is have three months lead time and they can at least paper launch some Milan X Threadripper, which again... They can do that, and I really hope they do do that, though, because it does feel a little bit like a slap in the face that AMD never brought out anything to upgrade the Zen 2 Threadrippers from. A lot of people, I think, bought the 24-core and hope to be able to go to, like, a Zen 3D 64-core eventually that can't. It would be nice if at least there was a limited launch of Milan X this summer to counter Sapphire Rapids, but... At least up until now, I have no information they're going to do that. But we cannot forget, before we start waving the banner that Intel dominates everything again, that AMD can certainly respond with something that will directly compete with Fishhawk Falls if they want to. But if they do, well, that'll have to be a leak for another video. That's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please Check that you're subscribed to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button. And then if you have extra money, guys... Support Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. We really are trying to build out a team here of people who can render future products, people who edit the podcast for you that you get early and ad-free. A die shrink came out just for patrons today. You can get that if you support us. And, you know, there's just so much great content there. There's just dozens and dozens of pieces of ad-free content on the Patreon. You get instant access to it at the proper tier. So look out for that if you have that money. We could really use that extra cup of coffee worth of money a month from you if you can afford it. But otherwise, as always... Thank you for watching.